Hi, welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at the Roborock E4, their latest offering in the E-Series product line, and one of the smartest navigating robots under $300. So how good is this product? To find out, I put it through a series of tests with navigation, cleaning performance, and much more. The E4 is part of Roborock's new batch of robot vacuums that also include the S5 Max, S6 Pure, and S6 Max V. One difference between the E-Series and the S-Series robots is the primary navigation sensor. All S-Series robots utilize LiDAR, which is a laser mounted on top that continually fires signals to draw a map, pinpoint its location, and detect obstacles. The E-Series doesn't have LiDAR but instead utilizes a combination of two gyroscopes and a LED motion sensor Roborock calls the optic eye. So these two sensors combine to enable the E4 to move around in straight lines. It's not as precise as LiDAR, but much better than standard navigating robots that just pinball around. One disadvantage not having LiDAR is you don't see the map in real time. It only shows up after the run when you tap on the cleaning history tab. On the plus side, not having LiDAR allowed Roborock to bring the price down to budget levels. And when I say budget, it's right between $200 and $300. Out of all the robots in this range, the E4 has the most sophisticated and efficient navigation but a notch below robots that use LiDAR when it comes to thoroughness and precision. If you compare it to let's say a Roomba 690, which is at the same price point, you can clearly see the difference how it navigates. The Roomba 690 just moves in a random direction, while the E4 is more precise and calculated. It's the only budget robot vacuum I can see right now that can realistically clean a large home without getting lost, thanks to the more advanced algorithm and the recharge and resume feature. So if you're not familiar with Recharge and Resume, it's the ability of the robot to automatically recharge if the battery runs low and resume cleaning to finish the job. The E4 uses the same 5200 mAh battery as the newer S-Series robots so it can run for up to 200 minutes. I also tested the E4 in tight quarters and it didn't have any issues servicing areas like this one. It was able to navigate around the chair legs and didn't get stuck. One of the big surprises during the testing phase is the high amount of airflow. The E4 maxed out at 21 CFM at the highest power setting, which is more than any of the S-Series robots I've tested so far. The high airflow translates to excellent pickup on hard floors where the E4 makes clean passes even at the balanced setting. Other factors also come into play here. The E4 retains the same design underneath as more expensive Roborock options, with the combo brush and the seal behind it. In all the tests on hard floors, I didn't encounter any big issues with the E4. Passes were clean even with heaps of debris. It scored high marks in the Sanon hard floor test with an average pickup of 99.4%. So this is the average of two tests, one done in turbo and another in the max setting. On carpet, surface cleaning is also excellent, but it tends to struggle with fine stuff like coffee on low and mid pile carpet. One reason would be the lower number of passes. With the S6 Max V, you can go as high as three passes with a few taps on the app, whereas the E4 only went over the area twice. It was also average in the deep cleaning test up 69.83%. Again, one reason for the lower score despite the high airflow is the lack of passes. If your home has lots of carpet, I would suggest turning on the carpet boost where the robot will increase suction when it detects carpet. Next, we look at how well the E4 brush resists tangles. So I scattered one gram of human hair between five and seven inches on hard floors and carpets. The E4 did better on hard floor with fewer strands of hair wrapping on the brush. However, it didn't do as well on carpet with this much hair on the brush roll. You'll have to use a pair of scissors or a blade to remove the hair as the E4 doesn't have the brush cleaning tool. Another struggle for the E4 is edge cleaning. As you'll see, it didn't pick up the pet leader at the edges and left a huge chunk. The side brush also scattered a bunch since it spins more rapidly when cleaning these areas. The 0.64 liter capacity of the E4 is larger than the S5 Max, S6 Pure, and the S6 Max V's capacity of 0.46 liters. One issue though is the lack of a door. So you'll have to remove the filter piece behind it to dispose of dirt, which can be tricky. The E4 also comes with a gravity tank that Roborock says is 28% larger than the older E-Series robots. This is the same tank found in the S6 Pure with two adjustable flow settings. However, it won't be as good as the S5 Max or the S6 Max V's electronic water tank since it's smaller and not electronically controlled. And the smaller capacity means the range is limited. Before mopping, make sure to turn on the gentle mode under vacuum settings Doing this unlocks a fifth power mode, so by default, the E4 only has four, silent, balance, turbo, and max. Gentle mode is really quiet, you can barely hear the motor humming, so it's a great setting for mopping floors. 
I tested the E4 and red wine and grape juice droplets I left overnight. The results were similar to the S6 Pure. It looks clean on video, but there are visible residue and tire marks upon closer inspection that's a bit sticky. This is a downside of using a gravity tank for stains like this. It can clean most of it, but you'll have to do another run with a clean pad to take off the sticky residue. Also note that the E4 used up all the water in the tank mopping this small section. So the E4 mops in straight lines like the S6 Pure, but it is in a store going over the area only twice. This test also showed that the E4 can go under furniture with a clearance of at least 3.9 inches, but it didn't clear the area in the middle which was only 3.5 inches. The E4 is only compatible with the Xiaomi Home app. One downgrade with the E-Series version is the lack of a real-time map. So as the robot is cleaning, you'll only see this graphic. The map is only accessible after the run when you tap on the Cleaning History tab under the menu. Users won't get access to advanced features like the invisible wall, no-go zones, or zone cleaning. But there will be access to a highly customizable scheduling feature also found in the higher-end S-Series robots. Even with the high airflow, the E4 isn't noisy. It ranges between 59 and 64 decibels between the lowest and highest power settings, so it's possible to use the E4 even while you're working. To conclude this review, the E4 is an excellent option for people looking for a reasonably priced robot vacuum in the sub $300 range that can clean large homes. The advanced navigation algorithm, large battery, and recharge and resume feature make this possible. However, it doesn't have the thoroughness of higher-end options like the S5 Max and S6 Max V. But with unlimited scheduling, that shouldn't be a concern as you can schedule as many cleanups as you want. If you have any questions about the Roborock E4, please leave them in the comment section and I'll answer them ASAP. For more information about the Roborock E4 along with a review on my blog, please check the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this video is helpful to you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.